previous part of this video I looked at making a plaster mould of my Chavant sculpture of a steampunk astronaut. I also looked at casting up a copy using dragon skin silicon which is uh, made by Smoothon. In this video I'm going to paint the cast using Psycho Paint which is also manufactured by Smoothon. I'm going to have a quick look at punching some hair and putting together some costume pieces to make the final statue. So painting silicon isn't the same as painting other materials uh, because silicon is so bendy and flexible the only thing that will actually stick to silicon is silicon so if you're going to paint it you actually need to use a paint which has a silicon base so paints like acrylics or enamel simply won't work with uh, silicon they'll flake off or often won't even dry if you apply them so it can be a bit of a learning curve to actually figure out how to paint this stuff my previous experience has been with painting tin silicon and I used this to make these tentacles for my Lab 558 video as well as various puppets and things in the past. So there are actually two types of silicon. There was tin silicon and platinum silicon. Um, tin silicon, as you may imagine, tends to be a little bit cheaper, which is why I've used it um, quite a lot in the past. And I've developed a methodology for painting that. So what I would do would be go to the hardware store and buy some silicon bathroom sealant. I would then thin it down with white spirit and use oil paints to pigment it. And that would work perfectly well. The silicon in the uh, bathroom sealant would dry and cure, and that would allow the paint to actually adhere to the silicon paint pieces and that worked pretty well. However, once I started trying to use platinum silicon, I quickly found that that method simply doesn't work. The tin silicon won't cure when it's on platinum silicon. So I had to come up with a new methodology for doing this. Now, luckily, Smoothon actually make a silicon specifically for this purpose, and this is it. It's called Psycho Paint, uh, and it's a silicon itself. So basically, you mix it up in a two-part batch in exactly the same way that you do for the dragon skin silicon. So what I'm doing here is to mix out equal batches of the Psycho paint and mix them together. Now the advice online says that you can thin down the Psycho paint with something called toluene. Now having read online that appears to be a paint thinner too. So I decided to actually have a go with white spirits, um, which is the method I'd used previously, only in that case I was actually using the tin silicon rather than the platinum silicon. Uh, and I figured that would probably serve the same purpose. What I've also got is a bunch of small pigments here. What I'm going to do is pour off a small amount of the mixture that I've created here into these shot glasses, then add a tiny amount of pigment to each one, and then I'll have a palette of colors to use. Now I know it's possible to use an airbrush to um, apply this paint. While I do have an airbrush, I've never tried this before, and so far the mixture I've got seems a little bit too thick to airbrush, so I need to have a bit of an experiment if I ever want to try that. So for the time being, I'm just simply going to be using brushes to apply this. So the first one I'm doing is red, and it doesn't take much pigment to colour the paint at all. Um, as you can imagine, red's used quite extensively in skin, so that's the first one I'm going to start with. As with other paint jobs I've done on previous models, the intention here is to slowly add small amounts of colour washes effectively to slowly build up some colour to this. It's not the sort of thing where you paint on thick layers of paint, it's more about subtlety and washes that slowly build up. So what I'm doing here initially is to add a wash of red uh, to try and add a little bit of red to the cheeks and the nose and areas of the face that generally have quite a lot of blood flowing in them. And my intention for this guy is, is going to be quite red faced and a bit sort of um, larger than life I suppose so he's going to be quite red faced anyway but what I don't want to do is go in really really heavy with paints and then not be able to come back from that so I'm slowly building it up I don't know how much of this is really coming across on the camera here. To the eye I can see some quite subtle variations in colour, but to the camera it's not really showing quite so much. However, if I do take the uh, beginning shot and the end shot of the paint job, hopefully you can see a difference between the two there. What I found was that this took quite a long time to start looking real. Simply adding red wasn't enough. I found that adding brown to the recessed areas of the cast really helped. Adding blue in really helped as well. And I found that with previous paint jobs, that adding blue really, really does add something. It's quite counterintuitive in a sense, because when you look at people, you don't generally see blue. But if you think about it, um, blood vessels often do look blue beneath the skin. So the blue pigment certainly adds something to the paint job. So at this stage it was starting to look a little bit more real and you can see that there's a fair degree of red in the nose and on the lips and chin. So I felt that I was on the right track here but there was still certainly something missing. So 
Similarly to oil paints, you do have a little bit of time before the paint fully adheres to the silicon. So if you do have gone wrong, you can come in with some uh, white spirit or whatever thinner you're using and actually remove it if you've gone a bit too heavy. So I found myself doing that a fair bit just to try and balance out the colors. I found that adding red over the eyes really, really helps as well. Um, this will dry to sort of a thin film, which I will be peeled off. What I'm gonna do is leave the red around the edges where the eyelid meets the eyeball. And I found that that added a real degree of uh, realism to it. And just to demonstrate that Psycho Paint is a silicon in of itself, here's the paints after I've finished with them. And as you can see, the base that I've mixed has dried to a very spongy, jelly-like consistency. So that's reacted in much the same way as any other silicon. And the same is true for the pigmented batches that I mixed up as well. One thing I did learn is that you really don't need to mix up too much of this stuff. You only really need tiny amounts to colour the cast. Now one thing that was bugging me through the whole paint job was the fact that it was very very shiny and even when the paint had dried that shininess still continued. So um, having read a bit online people were sort of suggesting all sorts of uh, matting agents and things like this. Something that I discovered years back is that if you want to colour silicon you can add pigment to it to colour it intrinsically so like its base colour is whatever colour you tint it. But what you can also do is add powders to it. Now, I think this is referred to as flocking in the States. Um, and what I would do um, back in the day was to add talcum powder to the silicon and that would give it a white base and make it less translucent. So I decided to try and uh, mat this down using some talcum powder. So I'm just brushing some on with a brush here and I found that that really, really worked. So um, it was very easy to get rid of the shininess simply by giving it a quick dusting and then fanning it out with a fan brush. Now as with many paint jobs, the lighting conditions that you're looking at it under can have quite a drastic effect on how the paint job actually looks. So I was painting this under artificial lights in the workshop, but here it is out in daylight, and as you can see, it looks vastly different. And I've got to say, I think that looks really, really nice. It does have that realistic look that I was going for. Now obviously, he doesn't have any hair at the minute, so he does look a bit weird, but I was pretty pleased with how that came out. Now I've sculpted this chap as a bit of an overweight fellow and um, the mannequin that you can see here is quite thin so what I need to do is bulk out the body and the way I'm going to do that is to use some upholstery foam and just basically glue that onto the body to pad him out a bit and make him a bit more overweight. So what I've done here is literally just to take some sheets of foam here and tape them to the body to try and give him a bit of a belly. Luckily the foam cuts very very easily on the bandsaw so it was very easy for me to cut and shape these pieces. And it was really just a case of trying to build this up uh, and trying to make it match the sculpture for the head. Now the whole thing will be covered by an overall, so I was able to push pieces of foam in and move them about a bit to try and get the overall look that I was going for. So here's a quick costume test, and you may have seen some of these things before if you've been uh, going through my YouTube channel. A lot of these pieces were made for the Beast of the Air video, which is a music video that I made for my brother some years back. Uh, as you can see, he's wearing the harness there and also the large canister on his back um, was part of the costume too. So they've been sitting in a cupboard for quite a while, so I figured I could use them for this piece. What I've also got is some rocket boosters on the back of the legs here. Now I figured this is going to be an astronaut, so um, if he is floating about in space, he needs a way to move about, so I figured they would be appropriate. These were things that I made for a costume some years back and never ended up using, so they've been sitting in a box too, so I figured they will work quite well in this case. So here's a quick test fitting with the silicon cast on the mannequin. And he does look a bit odd without any air, I have to say, but, but actually it doesn't look too bad. And on a few occasions when I was walking down to the workshop and coming back, I did sort of startle myself a little bit because there was a human figure there and my brain suddenly thought there was someone standing there. So I guess that bodes well if uh, my brain's perceiving it as a real person. So of course the cast only covers the front of the mannequin, so I need to make a skull cap effectively to cover the top and the back of the head. And this is something that you often see astronauts wearing in real life, I guess it's to monitor bioscience or wherever it may be. So I wanted to make something that was very similar. Now um, what I did for this was to take some Nappa leather and basically just sew a piece together. 
Now, this isn't a sewing channel and it's not something that I'm particularly good at, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how I did this. But basically, I cut out some patterns made of paper, just positioned them, and then I just sewed some pieces together. So the next step is to punch some hair in. And as you can see here, I've had a go at doing an eyebrow. Now, hair punching, I think, is an art unto of itself. So I've done a little bit of this in the past, but I am by no means an expert on it. So I found myself referring to some online videos about hair punching myself to try and figure out how to do this. It's not too difficult in principle. What you do is to take a sewing needle and to cut the eye of the sewing needle in half. So you end up with like a Y-shaped implement then you use that to push individual strands of hair into the silicon and the silicon will grab the, the strands and hold them in place. Now obviously that's quite a laborious task and takes forever so it did take me quite a while to do this. What you can do to speed things up is actually to push several strands of hair in at one time and that is a lot quicker. So a method I used here really was to punch a bunch of hairs in if the hairs were in the centre of a mass of hair but then to resort to punching in individual hairs when I got towards the edge to try and, try and create a more realistic look. The eyebrows in particular were particularly difficult, although I did try and get them to lay as flat as I could against the skin, they were still sticking out more than I wanted. Now, I tried various products like hair gel and hair wax to mat them down and keep them flat against the skin, but none of these were strong enough, so what I ended up doing was to put some super glue into the hair and then smooth it down with my finger. So the eyebrows on the final model are actually sort of solid blobs um, of hair held together with super glue, but at a distance it doesn't matter too much. So I happy with that. I also figured that he could probably do with a giant moustache given that he's meant to be a Victorian gent so I punched some hair into the upper lip. This was a lot easier to do than the eyebrows actually because it's such a large mass of hair I found that that was um, easier to do because you could punch in a number of hairs in at the same time and that sped things up quite considerably. So there he is in costume with his moustache and I used a bit of uh, hair wax to shape that so the last thing I needed to do was to create some form of space helmet for him to wear. Now I didn't want to cover his face obviously because I spent so much time making it. So what I decided to do was have a helmet which would cover the back of the head and then he could be holding the front of the helmet under his arm. So in order to do that what I decided to do was to get a plant pot from a local hardware store and use that as a basis for the helmet. So I've covered um, using EVA foam and that sort of thing in a previous video so I'm not going to go into too much detail with this but basically I added pieces of foam to the helmet and that formed a frame around the back of his head that I was able to build up. So here's what I've come up with and I've given him some shoulder pads as well. Now the whole thing needs uh, some painting and also a bit of detail work, maybe with some brass piping, that sort of thing. But that's the basis of the space helmet. And that's basically it, there's the finished mannequin. As you can see, I've dressed the space helmet using some leather rivets, and I've also added some brass and copper piping to it, just to give it a bit more of a steampunk aesthetic. I'm quite pleased with how this come out. I think there are some problems with the uh, body. I think I could have made him a bit fatter, perhaps. Um, the problem with that, though, is that he wouldn't fit in the overalls that I had. Uh, nevertheless, he went down very well at the Space Center, and a lot of people were saying that they were getting scared by him staring at them. So I guess I sort of hit that uncanny valley area where people weren't quite sure whether he was real or not. In fact, the uh, lead singer of the Men That Will Not Be Blamed For Nothing, one of the bands that were playing on the night, actually tweeted a picture of himself standing in front of it, so that was kind of cool too. And in fact, Smooth On and Bentley and Reynolds Advanced Materials actually retweeted some pictures of this sculpture and a link to this video series as well, which is really nice of them. So the sculpture's got a bit of attention here and there, which is nice. So thanks very much for watching, that's it for this video. Uh, I must say that I've really enjoyed working with Dragon Skin. I think it really is a really uh, nice silicon to use and does create some very realistic results. So I'm eager to have another go with this and sort of learn from the mistakes from this one. There'll definitely be some more um, silicon statues coming and I'm actually running a short update um, series of videos on my channel at the minute, uh, charting the progress of a new one which will eventually be cast up in Dragon Skin too. So keep an eye out for that and uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.